And that brings us to the final baseline pre best practice for today. And this one is target your RSSI or receive signal strength indication value based on the client requirements. So this one kind of brings us to the edge and the end of, of how much we can reconnoiter using a tool like uh, Wi-Fi Explorer. And we can use this, but to go to much deeper, we're going to probably have to go to a, a, a more uh, full-featured discovery application, something like a protocol analyzer. But we can still do this, and we can check this out. And here's what I mean by the RSSI value. So when we look at the student SSID here, on the access point room 104F, and then we jump over here to see the speed that it's transmitting at 144 megabits per second, that really means that the signal strength and the signal to noise ratio are strong enough to be able to support a certain type of modulation rate. And that modulation rate encodes data and transmits it over the air. This rate of 144 megabits per second is, is a, a value of how fast we can transmit one single frame. But what we really care about is how fast we can transmit many frames. And so the thing we're looking for is an average of how fast we transmit and successfully, how, an average of how fast we transmit successfully. And that's what we call throughput not just transmission rate or connection speed. And the throughput speed is only, best case, about 50% of this value here. So if all of our best practices are working properly, if we've set everything else up and tuned this network to work properly, we could expect or hope to get half of that or 72 megabits per second of actual throughput. And that's shared by the whole channel. So the more people you have on that channel, if you have 10, then they're each averaging 7.2 megabits per second. And if you have 20, they're each averaging about 3.5 megabits per second. And if you have 100, it's in the kilobit speeds. So that's why this matters. Now here's how we tell. We look over here, and under the receive signal strength, we see a number. And it's, again, a, a number that's in dB. NEG 63 dBm is a fairly strong signal, but that is the number at which the 802.11 radios, they change from one modulation type to another. As long, if you look in the standard, there's a chart, and the chart says in order to support the modulation rate you need for 144 megabits per second, you actually need a negative 64 dBm signal. Negative 63 is stronger than neg 64, so that means we're still able to support that. But if we were to drop down below neg 64 to neg 65, now it changes the modulation rate and we change our speed down to something like 130. And each speed increment changes from there on down. So this gets us into the point where we start our, we're beginning to talk about something called traffic engineering. This is something we used to do on the wired side networks. We had hundreds and hundreds of users and limited amount of um, connectivity using the old types of ethernet that were limited to like 100 megabits per second. And this is before our ethernet switches went to, well, before we went to switches when we were still using hubs and half duplex ethernet. Today, of course, all of our switches support full duplex connectivity on each port, and they're almost always at least a gigabit of throughput, and that's transmit and receive at the same time. Wi-Fi is not in that same level. Wi-Fi is more like the old original types of ethernet that was half duplex hubbed types of um, a shared uh, collision domain type of uh, network. So these numbers are important. If you're trying to guarantee 144 megabits per second everywhere, then you would need to guarantee that you had at least a NEG64 dBm RSSI signal in every location. And in order to do that, you can start off with Wi-Fi Explorer. But when you see anomalies, like some of these are showing 
weaker signals and it's still showing us 144. At that point, we need to break out some of our other tools, protocol analyzers, and possibly uh, site survey applications. And um, that kind of brings us to the end of what we can do. Uh, I won't say the end of what we can do with Wi-Fi Explorer, but the end of how we can use Wi-Fi Explorer to evaluate compliancy with these 10 baseline best practices. So a little bit about what I was talking here. This is kind of the beginnings of traffic engineering on Wi-Fi. And this really leads into design of Wi-Fi networks. So for this baseline best practice, we're going to give it a uh, uh, kind of a, a null judgment on this. So uh, if 144 megabits per second is what you're looking for, and you have at least an egg 64, then you're in the ballpark. But how do you know if you need 144 megabits per second? Well, here's an example. So let's say that this is a classroom that has 30 students. And these 30 students, um, well, let's look at it from this way. So under the best conditions, 144 megabits per second, uh, you're likely to get about half of that in actual throughput. And if you have uh, 30 clients, then each one of those would be, um, so the aggregate throughput would be 100 or would be 72 megabits per second divided by 30 gives about 2.4 megabits per second of throughput per student. And in today's environment in a classroom, for instance, we say the scale runs between one megabit per second per student and five megabits per second. One megabit per second means that your whole classroom is maybe going out to the internet occasionally, doing some web browsing, um, maybe social media, that type of thing. That's about all uh, for 30 students in, in the classroom. But if you're doing anything more involved with that, for instance, if you're going out and doing YouTube streaming videos, if you're doing any types of audio communications, and uh, most importantly, if you're doing two-way video conferencing, especially if you go to HD, and in the near future, uh, 4K HD, which has been enabled now by Apple, now you're gonna need to have higher speeds. So if you're doing a lot of video, two-way video conferencing with something like Zoom, uh, HD faces in GoToMeeting, or if you are doing uh, FaceTime from your Apple and you're doing quite a bit of it in the classroom, you can expect to require about five megabits per second per student. So if five megabits per second was the target, then this network would fail. If one megabit per second was the target, then this network succeeds. So how do you know? That's the job of traffic engineering, and that's what we have to talk about in our next series. OK, so that takes us to the baseline best practices. So now we've, we've started out by monitoring. We went to uh, performing an assessment. During the assessment, we took the values, the information we got. We made some recommendations. We've handed through the recommendations. Now we want to perform the remediation, which means somebody's got to dig into the controllers and start setting the, the features within the controllers. And then we fall back into monitoring mode. So if you use the old standard time-tested method of just listening to the scuttlebutt, which says, hey, your network's not working very well, or hey, the network seems to be pretty good, then that's what we call proactive monitoring. I'm sorry, that's what we call reactive monitoring. And that, it's okay, but there are newer forms of monitoring known as proactive that allow us to put sensors into your location. And we can do this uh, for you. WITS can come in, do all of these steps, get ready to perform the remediation. We can bring in our seven signal uh, platform place sensors in your area, and then we can begin to make the changes that we've recommended one at a time. Seven Signal allows us to set a before and after marker, and we can say, okay, here's what your network, how it was performing before we made these changes. Now we go into the controller, we implement a change, and now we can see from that marker on whether there was an improvement or not, whether it was the desired improvement we're looking for. And then if it is, then we set the marker again and we go to our next recommendation and show you exactly uh, what, the, what the results are. 
and we can do that and route it back to our scorecard to show you how you've improved. So we can do this in two ways. We can implement it during the remediation and then take the equipment back out, or we can leave it there if you want to have ongoing proactive management from now until the future. If you like this presentation and you want to see more of this type of information about Wi-Fi and networking in general, you can visit us out here at our resource sharing website known as HowWirelessWorks.com and uh, we'll be glad to set you up with a trial account or get some other types of connectivity. We have a lot of uh, different basic Wi-Fi training resources available here. And um, these are our contact information. So I'm Rick Murphy. Scott Williams was my business partner who introduced me a little bit ago. Here's our three uh, websites that are most often used by you. Wits Academy is our content management server, learning management server for our formal classes. How Wireless Works is our resource management and video server system. And the Wits, wirelesstrainingsolutions.com is our business center. If you have any um, questions, contact us there. And you're always free to send an email to me or Scott if you have any questions. With that, I think that's the end of today's presentation, and thank you for attending and listening. Contact us if we can help in any other ways. Thank you.